On November 8th, 2022, the people of Massachusetts will vote on Question 1, a ballot measure for a new amendment to the state constitution. The amendment, also known as the Fair Share Amendment, would establish a new 4% tax on income above $1 million, the funds of which would be directed towards public education, public transportation, and repairs of roads and bridges. The amendment has broad support from elected officials, grassroots organizations, local businesses, and labor unions across the Commonwealth. However, some have argued that with the nearly $2 billion surplus that the Commonwealth was left with at the end of fiscal year 2022, creating a new tax is not necessary. Additionally, with the public education system in Massachusetts being widely regarded as one of, if not the best in America, why would it even be necessary to give additional funding? I've set out to answer these questions, to talk with supporters about why they're getting behind this measure, and to cover why Question 1 is a necessity for the state. Hi, my name is Alex Kawa, and I'm a junior student at Clark University here in Worcester, Massachusetts. I'm a political science major, and with how many rabbit holes my obsession with politics has led me down, it was inevitable that I found out about Question 1, or the Fair Share Amendment, which will be voted on by the people of Massachusetts this election cycle. The text of the amendment is as follows. To provide the resources for quality public education and affordable public colleges and universities, and for the repair and maintenance of roads, bridges, and public transportation, all revenues received in accordance with this paragraph shall be expended, subject to appropriation, only for these purposes. In addition to the taxes on income otherwise authorized under this article, there shall be an additional tax of 4% on that portion of annual taxable income in excess of $1 million reported on any return relating to these taxes. To ensure that this additional tax continues to apply only to the Commonwealth's highest income taxpayers, this $1 million income level shall be adjusted annually to reflect any increases in the cost of living by the same method used for federal income tax brackets. This paragraph shall apply to all tax years beginning on or after January 1st, 2023. Well, that was quite a hefty read. Um, let's just take a look at the first ad from Fair Share Massachusetts, the group that is leading the charge in support of this amendment, and see if we can get a more condensed version. In Massachusetts, working people pay a higher share of taxes than the wealthiest 1%. It's true. They pay less and we pay more. Question one changes that. So those making over $1 million a year pay their fair share. 99% of us won't pay a penny more. And Question 1 raises $2 billion a year that the Constitution dedicates to public schools, colleges, and roads and bridges. Better schools and roads and a tax system that's fairer. Question 1 is a win-win for Massachusetts. Now that we know what this amendment is all about, I wanted to speak with some of its supporters to gauge exactly why it's necessary for the Commonwealth. For starters, I had the pleasure of speaking with State Representative Jim O'Day, who was the lead sponsor of the legislation that ultimately led to the amendment reaching the voters. Specifically, I wanted to ask him his motivations to fight for this amendment. You know, for 24 years, I was a social worker and recognized even then that some schools, some school children, some families were not getting the kind of high quality education that I think they expected that they're entitled to. And so, you know, over the years and over the years, there has just never been enough money uh, in, in our budgets to, to ensure that children were going to get the kind of education that we have to make certain that they get here in Massachusetts. Indeed, despite the high marks Massachusetts has received regarding public education, the truth is that its funding is finite and in many areas, as O'Day remarks, insufficient. In 2019, the Commonwealth passed the Student Opportunity Act, which created a seven-year funding plan for equity in public education. In addition, during the COVID-19 pandemic, Massachusetts schools received a boost in funding from the American Rescue Plan. However, this money will eventually run out, and there is no continual source of revenue specified in the Student Opportunity Act. 
The unaffordability of public higher education for many families is also an unaddressed problem in the state's education system, with the cost of tuition and fees increasing four times the amount of the median household income over the past two decades. During the same time period, per student spending on higher education has fallen by 32%. In between 2004 and 2016, the average student debt from graduates of Massachusetts public colleges rose by 77%, higher than any other states except for Delaware. The pandemic stretched our schools to the breaking point. Question one is a chance to make things better. It raises $2 billion a year, constitutionally dedicated to public education and transportation. So we can end the teacher shortage, hire more counselors, and provide better support for students. And only people making over a million dollars a year pay. The very rich pay their fair share, and our schools and our children see the benefits. I'm voting yes on question one. Although the flaws in the Commonwealth's public education system may not be so prevalent to some, regarding the provision in the amendment about investments in infrastructure, it's not a secret that Massachusetts roads and bridges are in need of fixing. According to the American Society of Civil Engineers, nearly 1 in 10 bridges in the state are structurally deficient, while 1 in 4 roads are in poor condition. Driving on these roads is estimated to cost the average Bay State driver $620 per year. You know, there's a, there's a particular street here in my district that is deplorable, and, and it's, it runs under a, a railroad uh, track. Uh, it's deplorable, and it needs tremendous amount of work. I have to think, as the winter is approaching, there will be numerous, numerous, numerous cars who will be losing uh, their hubcaps, their wheel covers, uh, flat tires, their shocks, and all of the things that go on with our cars that take a beating because of our inferior, you know, uh, roads and bridges and in, in transportation areas. I think, you know, transportation to the western part of our state, to the southeastern part of our state by rail is imperative for the entire Commonwealth to, to prosper. Uh, we can't just have it Central Mass centric and Eastern, and Eastern Mass centric. It has to be the entire Commonwealth. In addition to connecting each region of the state to each other, public transportation is also vital for mitigating the impacts of climate change in Massachusetts. Without a drastic drop in greenhouse gas emissions, the city of Boston is projected to be underwater by the end of the century. Even as recently as 2019, the effects of air pollution killed nearly 2,800 Bay Staters, and with over a quarter of the Commonwealth's carbon emissions stemming from transportation, public transportation it would go a long way in reducing pollution and giving future generations a fighting chance at a livable environment. Too many of our roads and bridges are downright dangerous to drive on. Question one brings in $2 billion a year so we can repair them. It creates thousands of new jobs at the same time. And only the super rich pay for it, not families like mine. I'm voting yes on question one. However, for as much support as the fair share amendment has received, it has also seen a hefty amount of opposition, with one of the main arguments against it being that it will not just impact the wealthy, but rather average working class base staters. The opposition campaign, the coalition to stop the tax hike, said in a statement, this amendment will hurt small businesses as they struggle with inflation, supply chain issue, and work to rebuild from the negative impacts of the pandemic. Given the fact that only 1%, 1%, the top 1%, not what you're hearing from the opponent, where it's coming into middle class commonwealth, that is completely inaccurate. It is the top 1% of individuals earning over a million dollars. They have been spreading false information constantly and inaccurate information. So the only way the other side wins is by putting out misinformation and trying to confuse the electorate and convincing the electorate that this is somehow going to impact people making, you know, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, 75,000, 45,000. Doesn't touch those people. 
And that is um, outrageous. In order to further combat these narratives, I spoke to Nicole DiCello, owner of the Bedlam Book Cafe here in Worcester, about why she, as a small business owner, is supporting Question One. It's not going to hurt small businesses. First of all, the majority of small businesses, it's, it's, it's not even based on your business's revenue. Or it's, it's based on your own personal income. So if your business, most businesses make under a million dollars anyway. Bay Staters voted in favor of the so-called millionaire's tax on Tuesday. The initiative passed with 52% of support. Massachusetts voters seized the once in a generational opportunity to uh, create a fairer tax system and deliver long-term sustainable revenue to places where it's most needed, public education and transportation. Uh, uh, I'm extremely confident that this will have an incredibly positive outcome, positive impact on uh, how we manage to increase our ability to hire more teachers of color, of making sure that uh, we um, you know, don't have teachers who are mostly underpaid today, having to provide their own supplies to the students in their classes. With the results in, only time now will tell what impact on the Commonwealth of Massachusetts the Fair Share Amendment will have. However, its supporters are optimistic, as am I, that this is a new beginning for a better future for Massachusetts.